Welcome everybody. I hope y'all can hear me well. Um, that train will pass. <laughs> but I've got my earbuds and so hopefully we get better sound here as wind's blowing because last time I did this wind was blowing a lot so fingers crossed better sound this time around but I hope you enjoy it and um, I thought you know what I'm gonna do a quick check-in uh post this new moon in virgo that we had um, a couple days ago on the 6th because i'm filming on the 8th right now and um wow that really hit me i'm gonna admit to you you know it, it hit me in an unexpected way um those of you who caught my last video on astrology uh, for the month of september thank you so much got a lot of views, got a lot of likes, got, you know, a decent amount of comments, which I, I need to, you know, get back to following up on you guys. But that response really um, encouraged me to go on and put this out for you this week. And uh, particularly, yeah, after that new moon in Virgo, um, you know, when I filmed the video on the astrology for um, September, now we get a jet overhead it'll pass it'll pass it'll pass <laughs> and you know what all this noise is gonna tie into what I'm saying oh my gosh how many curveballs were thrown my way did y'all feel that around um, Monday even Sunday it was like there was a disturbance in the force okay um, and I was trying to figure out what the heck was it you know I was like because, you know, when I get on here and I do these videos, I'm so cognizant in the moment of the astrology and everything happening. But then when I shut the camera off, I go live life. And then I'm like, what the heck is going on? I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the new moon in Virgo. That's what's going on. And I was talking to my oldest daughter about it because she's very, she's Pisces. She's very into the astrology. And she's got a Virgo rising, by the way. And so we were discussing and, uh, the energy, and I'm like, what is going on? And she's like, well, it was a, a stellium in Virgo. Yes, it was. My gosh, it was a stellium in Virgo. We had uh, the moon, sun, and Mars uh, all in Virgo. And, um, you know, Virgo is a sign having a lot to do with, um, you know, being productive, uh, you know, it, it, it's reminiscent of sixth house, which is very much about employment, uh, work opportunities. And um, Virgo also has a lot to do with health, healing, habits. Maybe they go on on the day to day, the mundane level, and um, also pets. And that's something that a lot of people, even myself, I think forget to mention about Virgo is that um, there's a lot of, of tie-in with pets and animals. So did you notice any of those themes coming up around last Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? Uh, because I, I surely did. And... Um, you know, I had an appointment, um, a dental appointment for myself and my youngest on Tuesday, and I had to cancel it because all of a sudden, my youngest daughter, who was supposed to go to this appointment, wasn't feeling well. And that was kind of scary because now you know the days that we're living in, you can't even ha have a cough or a sneeze without people getting concerned and feeling like you have to explain and prove that you're not sick and you don't have the rona you know what i'm saying um so it, it it was a little it was a bit concerning and uh so i had to cancel that appointment and take care of her and at the same time my dog has just gotten dramatically worse and for those of you who don't know um I've been dealing with him having mobility issues for the last year during the whole corona fiasco and um, have had trouble getting him uh, proper care. I mean, I've, ha I've thus far gotten him to in, into three different vets, finally narrowed it down to him having paralysis, but it's, it's gotten worse to the point where 
around the time of this new moon, I was realizing, my God, he can't even stand anymore. And I was having to um, feed him uh, by hand with a spoon and uh, give him water through a turkey baster. And so, and then, you know, at the same time, my daughter's not feeling well and we canceled this dentist appointment. It's all this health and pet stuff just, you know, out in left field. And speaking of the left field energy, um, a lot of Uranian energy, which, by the way, I uh, was listening to Leo King uh, the other day, and he's, I think, pretty much the only astrologer I'm really listening to right now. If y'all don't know him, go check him out. I don't know who doesn't know him because he's a damn good astrologer. I learned from him, you know, and he mentioned all the Uranian energy, and I thought, my God, you know, that is so spot on, and uh, I think it's something that I didn't quite mention in that last September astrology video, but think about it. We had uh, Jupiter and Saturn, and we still do have Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius, and Aquarius is co-ruled by Uranus. We have Taurus in Uranus retrograde, all three of these planets, Uranus, Jupiter, Saturn, all retrograde, by the way. But then in addition to uh, Taurus being in Uranus, uh, we've got Black Moon Lilith in Taurus. And Black Moon Lilith and uh, Uranus are about five degrees apart, or at least on the day of the um, new moon in Virgo, they were about five degrees apart. So... What does that mean? Well, all this Uranian energy is throwing us a lot of curveballs. And, right, my dog getting worse, my daughter getting worse with the health, you know, out of nowhere. And then even on, I believe it was Monday, I was doing, yeah, it was Monday, I was doing a client reading and got interrupted multiple times. Um, let me fix this. I think this is like, seems to be sinking there. While I was doing the client reading, I got interrupted three times. I mean, I had a lot of delays and distractions leading up to that reading, but I was pushing through because I knew I had to go out of town the next day. Um, Monday was such a crazy day because randomness out of nowhere and even though I kept trying to plod through and press through with my Taurus rising you know um, the communications kept cutting off and so recall also that on the 6th the day of this new moon in Virgo we had Mercury uh, retrograde go into shadow or Mercury and went into shadow okay so and that tends to be, yes, a lot of communication problems. So, my God, I hope it doesn't get worse. Like, if that's the first day of shadow. <laughs> oh, my God, help me. So, all right. A um, lot of curved balls being thrown. A lot of unpredictability. And I just did not see it coming. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Black Moon Lilith in Taurus, which it's basically uh, been in Taurus since April of 2020 to July 2021. And then I believe it went into Gemini for a while, and now it's back into Taurus. So. All this time, basically, more or less, except for what, uh, maybe a few, maybe a month or just a few weeks, um, you know, we've been dealing with this Black Moon Lilith and Taurus. And I think that's a pretty noteworthy thing because what does that have to do with? Um, well, a lot of times it can represent safety and security issues being highlighted and feeling like you are not secure or safe in this world and um, you find yourself deeply motivated to find safety and security. Um, a lot of times this can bring about existential fears in the material world and 
um, your ability to gain resources on your own accord, questions about can I support myself, am I able? There's a lot of fears having to do with loss or lack. And money seems to be a burning question, right? Taurus is an earth sign. Taurus uh, is, you know, very reminiscent of second house issues having to do with possessions, self-worth. And so also with this transit, people might feel that they are being made to feel guilty for wanting pleasure, wanting security, wanting luxury, or just um, material support, you know, that they're made to feel uh, guilty or wrong for wanting those things. And so how did that play out for you? I will tell you me personally. Oh, I'm going to tell you. Because <laughs> remember, this is like sitting five degrees away from Taurus and Uranus, right? In the same sign, right? Black Moon, Lilith, and Taurus, all right? So uh, for me, right after all the nuttiness I described earlier with that new moon in Virgo, well, I guess it was Tuesday, yeah. Got word that a business event venue that I have invested in dearly was canceled after they took about six hundred dollars hello <laughs> like who does this and this is what's worse they made the cancellation and made no mention of refunding people you know the application fees the booth fees for this major event i have already booked a car rental and i've already paid for it okay I have I've already actually invested more money into my event tent to get better lighting, better ventilation, better seating. And by the way, I had it all shipped to Austin where this event is going to be so that I didn't have to worry about transporting it. Like I really stuck my neck out financially to invest in my business. Um, with my daughter she's put money into it actually there's three family members who have put money into this and they just like oh we're canceling why because they're blaming it on um the austin city government is refusing now to give them a permit like hello well why did you take my money if you don't even have a permit what, what the heck is going on here? You know, and then I just, it was totally suspect that they didn't mention anything about refunding. So people, I, I'm not exactly sure how it came about. They, they were pressed to answer about the refunds and they come back and they say, well, you know what? We'll refund you 40% or we'll just hold your money until the next year. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Because they did the same thing last year. The same thing last year. And so how do we know that this is not going to happen again next year? That they're going to, right? Because there are rumors that this pandemic is never going to end. So long as people keep complying with it, the authorities, the powers that be, are never going to relinquish that power and people just keep rolling over and going along. And so, um, you know, my daughter and I are trying to like push back. And I, you know, I've had to send several emails and, you know, stand up and say, um, you know, you need to advocate harder for your small business owners, for your artisans. You need to stand in the gap because there's a war going on right now against small businesses. And so if you can't refund them 100%, you need to find an alternative venue. You need to go to a place that will give you permits or does not require permits. But you can't just roll over and play dead like last year because when is this going to end if you don't? 
And so I don't really know that anything I say or she says will amount to anything at the end of the day, but my God, they are messing with our money and it's like messing with our emotions, right? And again, yet another curveball, Taurus and Uranus, or Uranus and Taurus rather, and, um, you know, Black Moon Lilith in Taurus. And folks, it's like really setting a tone. And I'm not exactly sure how it's going to play out at this point for the remainder of the month. Um, well, given my last astrology video on the overall energy of September, I, I, I'm sorry to say that I feel people are going to, for the most part, try to play nicey nice and there's just some matters that are you know are not to be taken lightly there's economic warfare going on right now with um you know the biz the small business owners and what we have is people uh, going along with this and not understanding that you know, there's always going to be a variant. There's always going to be a variant. And I don't want to get off on talking about the Rona. So I'll leave it at that. I mean, if y'all want to hear, I, and I could say so much. I could say so much. But if you want to know my commentary on that, my gosh, go follow me over on Twitter at WarriorWoman212. Okay. I'm going to say that Possibly, you know, because these astro astrology videos are going pretty well, I very likely might post again next week or around the time as we get closer to the uh, full moon in Pisces, which is going to be the 20th. Yeah. So I might, might post at that time and... Um, check in with y'all again and uh wow yeah i should be back from austin so or coming back from austin on the 20th actually but you know what would be fun is if i could do a video with y'all while i'm out in austin i would love to show you some things in austin while i'm out there and maybe do a live or just upload something quick like this you know just to show you my austin trip so um, yeah, hopefully I will talk to you sooner. You know, I will talk to you again before the 20th. And uh, my apologies on, I'm not really crying, but I am. It's, it must, it's something with the allergies, I think. Oh, real quick. My daughter, I told you she wasn't feeling well. And people are freaking out. Oh my gosh, does she have COVID? Does she have COVID? Well, we have a friend who works in the medical profession and COVID tested her on the DL and she, it came back negative. <laughs> yeah. But I will tell you, we've all been mega dosing, you know, vitamin C, vitamin D. Um, we've been using colloidal silver. What else are we using? Zinc elderberry my gosh a whole combination of stuff and she's like recovering quick but this right here this is something in the environment i don't know if it's pollen i don't know what it is but i'm okay we're okay we're getting better and my dog um i started supplementing for him and i've got some supplements coming in and i might at some point share with you my journey on that and fingers crossed i'm hoping that um, we see some, you know, recovery because um, those of y'all who are prayer warriors and have your little fur babies that you love, um, unless things change for him, my kids are trying to talk to me about putting him down because he's really not in a good way. But I started doing physical therapy on him and I started supplementing and, uh, you know, making him a little concoction at home to help uh, with his neur neurological damage, which is apparently what's causing all of this. And I just paid last night for some supplements to repair 
the neurological damage. I live near an Air Force base, by the way. That's that. So we'll see. And I've just told my kids, I mean, I think that they feel i am got maybe too much wishful thinking, but I told them I have to at least give it a try. Um, I'm going to give it another month doing physical therapy with him and supplementing. And I'm going to see if there's any improvement. I'm just one of those people leave no stone unturned. And um, if I've given it my best and my best isn't good enough, then my conscience is clear and I'm going to do whatever I can to make him as most comfortable and I don't want him like that but I will say that over the last 24 hours that I've been supplementing and doing the physical therapy with him I personally have seen him uh, a lot less lethargic he doesn't seem as depressed he's a lot more alert he's trying to get up and walk around more he can't stand up for more than a minute um, but he is actually fighting. I can see he's got more of a fight in him. And um, so I'm encouraged. And um, yeah, if y'all want to pray for me and my dog, I appreciate it. Um, and uh, those of you who, last thing I want to say, those of you who live um, where I live, you know, uh, because I've been meeting a lot of people lately locally because of doing uh, local events here, one-on-one, face-to-face. So if you're watching because we recently met and I did a reading for you, I'm just letting you know that tomorrow night, Thursday, um, I'm going to be at Gypsy Kit from, let's see, it's a 6.30 to 9, I believe. Yeah, 6.30 to 9 p.m. on the 9th, Thursday night at gypsy kit so if you want a reading you know where to find me all right and for the rest of my audience y'all be blessed i'll check back in as soon as i can y'all hang in there with all these curveballs throwing your way okay <laughs> all right bye